Hey, what's going on everybody? Now, so many of you ask if I sell my baby tortoises, and the answer is yes, on certain occasions I do. So today, I thought it would be a pretty good idea to show you how to safely pack these animals so they arrive at their destination safe and sound. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tender. All right, so first things first, I want to talk to you about the packaging. That's very important when you're shipping a reptile, especially a baby tortoise. You want to make sure that the animals are well protected in the package. So I get all of my materials from Ship Your Reptiles. My good friends Robin Marklin and Chad Brown out there in Colorado, a fantastic business. And they also can supply to me the best rates via FedEx. So by using Ship Your Reptiles, I actually get the lowest possible shipping rate for my customers, which is really fantastic. Fantastic. And then, of course, they have all these unique and good shipping containers and so on. So come on over here, let me show you the first thing I do. I've assembled the box, and you can see, perishable, handle with care, it's got the arrows on it, so that hopefully the FedEx guy knows to take it easy. Luckily, I have a good relationship with my guy, but as you can see, we have these foam inserts. Now, these foam inserts do two things. Ooh, that's loud. These foam inserts do two things. One, they cushion the package inside, and two, they insulate this animal from the outside temperatures. And so many people get very worried about their animals getting too cold. Uh, luckily, these animals are being shipped right here in Florida. So I just take the inserts, and I slide them on in, all really nice and well done here. Again, the guys at Ship Your Reptiles have really fantastic products. They've been doing this a little while, so they know what they're up to. So now we've got our box pretty much set. Uh, this is not a Ship Your Reptiles product. I got a really good deal on these deli cups. It involves a little bit of work for me though. I just take a nice soldering iron and I go ahead and make the air holes. Just, just around here. I only make the air holes, you want to only make the air holes in the um, container on the inside because if you're insulating something like the box and I poked holes in it, well, I just defeated the purpose. I'm now letting outside air into my box. And most people get so nervous. If you're not a, a true person who knows about reptiles, you re gotta realize they're cold blooded. They don't breathe as much as we do. So don't worry about them suffocating, man. It would, it, it's not gonna happen because these are not airtight, um, but they are insulated to the outside environment. So, okay, so back to this. We have our little deli cup. I get some old newspaper. Just get a little bit of this. I do a little tear, scrunch it up. Now, we go get our little baby. So let's go over here and get the first little child, little, little chitlin that's gonna go. All right, this is the one that's heading out. Uh, this is a little leopard tortoise, and that's actually what we're shipping out today, leopard tortoises. They're just a fantastic species. Uh, these are actually going to homes in Florida, so that's fantastic. So I like to just give a little visual inspection, and this animal is responsive. It's been eating. I keep a very close eye on these animals as they're in the nursery here. Eyes are nice and happily bright and clear, and uh, he's doing what a tortoise does. When it's picked up, they kind of go into the shell. So I place him gently in here. Okay, and another thing, all these tortoises were soaked this morning, so I make sure they're hydrated. Now, they're only gonna be in the box for one day, okay? But if something were to happen and this animal wound up getting delayed and has been in the box for two days, they're gonna be okay. These animals spend a lot of time in the ground as hatchlings, so being in the box is not gonna be a problem. So then I just gently place the lid on top, snap it down, and this animal now has a nice, secure, safe environment for his journey. So I place in here gently. Now we're gonna get some more of uh, the newspaper, crumple it up, and look at this. I like to put the newspaper on either sides of that little container because it acts as kind of a seat belt, right? It keeps this animal from jostling around. Crunch it all up. Put it in, really get it wedged in there so that I know everybody's happy. Shred it up. One more corner. All right, now we just take a bunch of the newspaper, we crumple it up and put it on the top. 
What I like to also do for the folks that are getting a tortoise for me is I, I also go on outside and I grab some of the cactus pad that I have growing and I give each, each person two cactus pad. One to feed the tortoise, to mix in with their food. They love the taste of it. It's a great appetite, uh, appetite stimulator. And then one for you to plant, which I think is very important. You've got to learn how to start growing your own food for these animals. So you just stick this in the ground in a well-drained sandy soil area. If you're living in the south, it grows readily. If you're going to live up north and do this, you're going to obviously put it in a pot and get it under a grow light. But I like to just gently place them in. They can bend a little bit. All right, so I just place them in here. Now, we take the final piece of insulation and we're going to tape up the box. So, let's do that. And again, don't freak out because this little guy is not going to suffocate. Just not going to happen. So this is the trickiest part when I'm all alone. I just take it, pull it down, squeeze it together, pull it. It doesn't have to be pretty. It has to be secure. And you know how you make it secure? Add more tape. Not a problem. So I like to do two here. Nice and strong. Now this little guy is ready to go. So for those of you out there who are looking to get a reptile as a pet, make sure you do your research and that the laws enable you to keep a reptile pet. So this animal here is going to go and become a very valuable education tool for its owner to learn about captively managing wildlife and that's what's so fantastic about this. If we don't have captive raised animals to grow up, we're not gonna have those assurance colonies that are so important. Because the reality is this, folks, the wild is shrinking. Pretty soon, the wild isn't gonna exist. And we don't want these animals to disappear along with their habitat. So if we can be good stewards, which is what I impress upon everyone, it's not a pet, you are this animal's stewards. It's caretaker. And they can just teach you so much about the natural world. So that's how you do it. And one more thing I also want to remind you is these guys are going in state, in Florida. It's warm here. But if I were shipping them out of state, I'd make sure I taped on a heat pad. That's what this is, a little heater. And you just stick it on up inside the insulated roof. And that'll keep this guy warm and toasty as he makes his way to his new house. Well, we better get moving. I gotta get over to the shipping center before four o'clock. So I'll see you guys later. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope this helped out. Now you know how you ship a reptile. Later.